Welcome to Real Physics. Today I want to talk about a totally crazy idea about Mach's principle, Newton's bucket and the gravitational constant. And spoiler alert, I don't believe that this theory is true or even valid, but since I'm growing older and I still haven't found out all the riddles of gravity, I'm just putting out this idea out into the open end. Well, maybe some genius feels inspired by it. So shortly after I had rediscovered this intriguing relationship between the gravitational constant, the square of the speed of light and the mass and the radius of the universe, and you can write this even in a more intriguing manner as Denis Schama in 1953 did first, considering that sum over all masses in the universe divided by the respective radius. Well, to be fair, there was even Erwin Schrödinger thinking about that very same idea in 1925. That idea really fascinated me and continued to tickle my mind. So my first thought how to link that to a gravitational potential was to simply write that into a logarithm. Just imagine this expression, minus c squared log sum over mi over ri. I notate the gradient and wow, there is Newton's law. With order of magnitude coincidence, that gravitational constant you want to have. So I was absolutely fascinated by this approach. And then on top came the idea, wow, couldn't it be possible to find an explanation for dark matter? Because you have this flat rotation curve, and evidently a flat rotation curve would mean that you can describe it with a force which is not dependent on r squared as Newton's force of gravity, but just one over r. So if you think about doing this calculation with all masses, this one over r squared gravitational law would magically transfer at the border in a 1 over r law. Wow, that could be the reason for dark matter. The problem is it doesn't work because you have the entire universe and dark matter you observe at the edge of the galaxy. And unfortunately, as already Evan Schrödinger in 1925 had noted, there is a factor of 1 million in between. So seemingly it doesn't work. But I still desperately tried to fix that and I said, okay, maybe it's not depending on the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second squared, but maybe it depends on the maximum velocity in the outer regions of the Milky Way, such as, which is, has a typical value of 300 kilometers per second, one thousandth. So if you think about the square of this velocity instead of the square of the speed of light, you more or less get that factor of one million. So I desperately tried to make up a theory of that. It's not very well justified. And I, as I said, I don't believe it's true. However, at first sight, I think it's very intriguing that you get out that one over our force. Anyway, another argument why I think dark matter must be explained in yet another way is that it's kind of a misunderstanding to think it's just the radial dependence what changes. No, no, no. There is really a problem with mass also that we maybe probably have to understand the nature of mass or inertia in order to fix that. Now my feeling is more that you cannot just fix the R dependence, and, but you have to attack the entire theory. Maybe also mass understand in a more fundamental way. And of course, if you look at the evidence, it rather seems that there is this fundamental acceleration which plays a role, which is roughly c divided by the age of the universe. And that enters somehow the law of gravity. Mond has done this, even if I'm not convinced in the sense that it's really theoretically well founded. There is some interesting idea also to link Mond with variable speed of light as recently Manuel Barima Palomo has done. Might have a look at this paper. So the riddle remains unsolved. And well, honestly, I can just contribute to the market of ideas here. And hopefully someday we will have a proper explanation of dark matter. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.